You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The bullying, I felt very lost as a, as a person and I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. So it was really horrible. I mean, to the point of I tried to kill myself in school. Um, I remember going, going to school and then going to the Asda and just walking out back in the days so where there was like knife, no, knife crime wasn't as bad, you know what I mean? And just going out with a kitchen knife and just literally going to a cemetery and slitting my wrists. If they go to the toilet, I'd be like, where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going to the toilet. I go, I stand by the toilet. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> why are you leaving me? They'd be like, you're fucking nuts, you. I'd be like, why are you leaving me? Where are you going? What, what, what? I'm going to the toilet, Sally. I'd be like, oh, don't be too long. And my mum walked into one of my apartments once and I'd wrote in blood, die, Sally, die on the wall. Like, like it was normal, just sitting there having a cup of tea. My mum must have been like, the fuck is this? girl on I should just be off the Richter scale so they come into my house and obviously I'm like they're looking for a weapon and I'm thinking oh my god I went they were like charging me and I went what am I getting charged with they're like section 18 I was like what's a section 18 like I don't I don't I don't know um anyway they were like it's under manslaughter well mm, I, th I thought oh my god I'm not gonna see I'm not gonna see the kids grow up I'm I'm going away Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got DJ Sally Axel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm a bit, a bit nervous coming on here. <laughs> so you should be. You've released a book, Crazy Bitch. Yep. I think that's probably a true representative of you. Um, bit yeah. of a nutcase. <laughs> well, I think people think I, I think I am. I think I've got two layers to me. I think obviously I'm a no shit, take, take no shit kind of person. And also I've got like a sensitive and more side. But I think when it comes down to it, I'm... Crazy bitch. It's quite, yeah. quite, quite authentic. So you've got your book, Big Brother. The most recent yeah. one, obviously, when you stabbed your ex-boyfriend. Mm. Partying, stabbed him. I didn't part. I wasn't partying. I was partying. just in the house on my own. Um, I was really manically depressed at the time. But And, and it went viral. Yeah. Um, your kids there, you lost custody of your kids, but yeah. we'll go through all that. Okay. Let's get a better understanding of you. Okay. Go right back to the start. Where you grew up and how it all began. Um, well, I was born in Chester, um, and my mum and dad were married and then they were in quite a volatile relationship my mum just decided to like get up and leave him so we moved to newcastle where my grandma and grand grandpa were um we were always moving when i was a kid i went to i think I went to like eight or six seven primary schools and um, five four high schools and um, so i was like quite not a person who was used to sticking around um and it was it, it was it was it was good until I was a teenager. I think I mean my past was really really nice. Like, I remember my mum being nice when we were kids and we were doing loads of nice things. But I think when I went to high school was when I went downhill in my life. It was just horrific. Why? Um, bullying. I got badly, really badly bullying um, by girls. Um, horrifically. Like I remember getting ugh, going out into the um, the park and the in the dinner time and someone the mole jumping on me that much that I had to pretend to have an athletic fit to like to make them think I was gonna die, to stop battering me, because it was that. It was grow up fast kind of thing. And because I, I didn't have the same accent as everyone because everyone had either a Birkenhead accent or quite Scouse-ish, you know, Scousers would say that it's not a Scouse, but they had a very strong accent. I've, I speak quite well spoken back then. So I think it was, I was a bit pinpointed. Yeah. What was, um, how long were you getting bullied for? Um, so I was bullied all the way through year seven. Uh, I had re I was really, really skinny then because I stopped eating and I was very, very slight. Uh, eight and nine, um, I went to another school, got my nose broken, had to get it re-broken, reset. The girls all had lighters in their hands. It was over the f just jealousy a lot of the time as well. Um, and in year nine, ten, I fought back, yeah. And I started trying to not be a bully myself. I just w try to not take any crap as much, but it was bad still. Try to defend yourself. Yeah, for the first time I had a mouth more. Um, I used to take things out on my it, back at home. So all of the bullying in school, I would be like quite quiet and reserved in school. And then I'd go home and be like aggressive to my family. Um, didn't want to be here. Was suicidal for most of my teenage life, um, childhood. I mean, to the point I was sectioned twice 
Um, and I wasn't just sectioned in like a normal hospital. It was like an adult mental hospital. Because back in the two, 2000s, the, like, the way they are now with um, child mental health and you can, you can just, you know, you can say, oh, this child's depressed, this child's this. That wasn't heard of when I was, when I was in school. Um, I was just known as being naughty. Uh, not not a good obviously someone attention seeking a lot of the time when realistically I was diagnosed with um, histrionic and borderline personality disorder at a very young age in, when I was sectioned. So is that a split personality? Um, no, histrionic and borderline personality disorder are um, caused by trauma um, in your life. Um, I believe that quite a lot of it's due to a separation anxiety because of um, I didn't really feel like I had a family unit. Um, and also the bullying, I felt very lost as a as a person and I didn't know who I was. Mm-hmm. So it was really horrible. I mean, to the point of I tried to kill myself in school. Um, I remember going, going to school and then going to the Asda and just walking out back in the days where there was like knife, not knife crime wasn't as bad, you know what I mean? And just going out with a kitchen knife and just literally going to a cemetery and slitting my wrists and being found there. It's just... Were you trying to kill yourself or were you trying to get attention? Um, I think I was trying to get attention now looking back at it. I would have said I wasn't at the time. Um, but I think um, I just wanted to feel love. I really want stability and love. And my mum my mum didn't know how to deal with me because it, she, she, my mum's brilliant. She's a brilliant grandparent and amazing. Like she is like truly my best friend now. But back in the days, um, I was just foreseen as naughty and rebellious when really I was actually severely mentally ill which was which is it's like crazy and to think that they put me in a mad, an adult mental hospital um like with schizophrenics and bear in mind I'm in year, year 10 in school and um they put me with like 30 40 year old schizophrenic there was a man who thought he was Michael Jackson hiding under my bed <laughs> I swear <laughs> I was getting changed and all I heard was <laughs> I was like, what? Uh-huh. Looked into my bed. There's a man with a white glove under my bed. Like I'm laughing, but I, it's, poor bastards. Do you know? Do you know what? When I tell people the story, I mean, when I was in there, I was kind of so scared, but I kind of like because of my mental illness, I was kind of playing around. I think I seen it more like I wasn't taking it in properly, and now it's like so traumatic thinking about what I was like. And I remember um, telling them we were allowed like an, um, an hour out in the garden, and I was like maybe a schizophrenic woman, a woman who'd slept throat and really severe cases of mental illness because you got locked, you were locked in. And um, I was like, come on, we've got to escape and go to the pub. So I got like a few of them. We all escaped and went to this, cl- it was in Clatterbridge and, um, on the Wirral and we went to this pub and I was sitting there flirting with the men because part of my personality disorder hysteronic is um, I was overly sexual. Um, not in like a, 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 I had sex, but I like to be sexually, uh, um, people to be attracted to me sexually which was weird at a young a young age. So I was like flirting with the men, getting them to buy me beers. And these these four other women, or I think one was a man, I can't really remember precisely, but they were sitting there in the corner of the pub and I'm playing pool with all these builders. And the next minute I look, I'm like, Ken, do you want my number and all this? Or whatever I was saying, flirting away for half a lager and lime. And the next minute, this big bus with Clatterbridge Mental Hospital just pulls into the car park. I thought, shit. It's like something out one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Oh. Was people buying you a drink then? You were only 15? Um, yeah, so I started clubbing when I was like 13. I remember like being in my school uniform and I had double G boobs. So I was like really big boobs. And I remember going into the Weatherspoons in... Um, no, the Yatesies or something in, you know, in Liverpool and they were going, you're in your uniform. And I was like, I've dressed as Britney Spears. They were like, I was like, it's fancy dress, but it wasn't. It was my actual uniform. Mm-hmm. And I think I um, got taken advantage of a lot by men and um, peers or, and stuff because I was very easily led by males. Not that I was sleeping with them, but I was in very scary predicaments. Like I'd be in cars and on chases and... Um, with, with a lot of drugs and dr- drinking at very young ages in, in houses of like crack houses and stuff like that, hanging around thinking I was cool, but I wasn't cool. I, was, I wasn't cool at all. I was very, now looking back, it's like very taken advantage of, to be honest. Of course, man, you were only 14, 15. Yeah. What were you sexually active at that age? Um, I lost my virginity when I was year nine, in year nine, but it was just So someone. how old was you then? So I was 14, just turned 14. Still um, young though. Very young. I wouldn't, and would never let my daughter ever even leave my house at that age. But um, um, I was with the same lad for a few years anyway, and we lost our virginities together and stuff like that. And it was too... About the same age? No, he was older. 
um, but it was to Robson and Jerome. Oh my love. Oh my love. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but uh, but I was then put. My mum couldn't cope with me, so she put me in a hostel. Um, like this hospital called Pembroke Courts. It's like um, on the Wirral. And um, I was in there with like it's a halfway house for like people out of prison. But I was only in year eleven in school. Um, so I had to grow up very fast. I was on income support and I was having to get myself to school in year 11, which I just didn't bother doing because I was like, why would I want to go to school? So you just have to sign people in and out. And it was just a grow up very, very fast. And I was in the middle of Rock Ferry and there was a lot of bad people around me. And I, it was it was, it was was sink or swim. It was like, you, you fight or you're going to get battered kind of, th- kind of life, living in a hostel. I would never think of my children to be able to go into that I wouldn't even want them to, to even see that were you drinking or taking drugs then uh, yeah I was just going with the flow I think of life and I was always going out with the rat the boy about town and um and then uh, when I left school I just thought fuck it around here like I didn't want to be around here I am um, around Liverpool and um I just decided to move to Ibiza to be a stripper. <laughs> so I was like... How was... long were you in the loony bin for? How can you be in the loony bin at 14, 15? Because... Um, and the, the adult one? So now looking back... Is that back, how fucked up you were? I I know it wasn't. There wasn't ever any option for children's one. I think I went through such a traumatic experience with child mental health that um, like it, it, it has tra- totally traumatised me. And I think how the hell could they let... Cause, I was a child, like if you look back now, um, I was a child, I wasn't, I wasn't a grown adult, I wasn't thinking, and I was with, I was with really, it's seriously, I mean, there was a woman in there, it was like about well, two, not three stone or whatever, skinny, but through anorexic, and then I was with another woman who lost her son, another woman who slit her throat, like, so visibly, another woman who thought all her teddy bears were, were children, her children, I, I, like, but I was just this girl who was suicidal, didn't fit in, and... I just had always had an urge that I wanted to not be here all, all the way through my adolescence. Were you suicidal in there? What? Were you suicidal in there? Yeah. Um, I you on to, suicide watch? Yeah, every one minute up. So um, this was after the runaway time. This is, the, I think, the second time I went there. Um, they would do one minute up. So I wasn't allowed to be not watched for every one minute of the day. I wasn't allowed in my room. They put me in a segregation room. Um I had a mattress on the floor. I wasn't allowed any blankets because in case I hung myself with them. And it's weird because I don't even speak about it because it's so it's it's just bringing it back up. But um, a woman would sit at the door and she'd just watch you for the whole day, like for the whole day. Um, and you'd be dosed off your heads with drugs and stuff. How did the staff treat you? Um, really, really nice. Um, they were nice. They knew I, was, I think they knew I was too young to be in there. There was no other big people my age in there. Um, and I remember thinking, well, why is, why is my family let me come here? Like, why? But I don't believe that they knew how to deal with child. I don't think it's not, it, was, it wasn't was spoken about back then. It was, it was like a taboo, child yeah. mental health, and it really wasn't something people... Spoke. What about your dad? Um, my dad has been an on-off relationship for our whole life, and I don't speak to him now, and I probably won't speak to him again. Um, it's not deep. I don't believe that um, blood is makes anyone extra special in your life. I believe that um, it comes with respect and it, and trust and you know and honouring somebody. And if you can't show me that, it doesn't matter if you're blood or not. Like that's the way I treat it. How does your mum see it now? But I regret, or does she understand that? She understands me but a lot you need more to now. Help. Yeah, I think my mum's like. <sighs> I spoke to my mum about it and like my mum is like such, I think whatever she didn't do when I was, because I was hard work, like I was to the point of like, my mum would say, get up for school. I'd go downstairs and smash her car windows to not go to school. And I, they'd have to like, I'd run away all the time and she'd have to like hide my clothes so I wouldn't run away. Like it was, it was bad for them. It, it was so traumatic for my mum. My mum just didn't know what to do. So I think my mum understands now it come, I wasn't, I wasn't just being attention seeking or naughty. It was more, I was mentally ill, and that's and that is what it is. And I, I think now I've come to terms with my mental illness. I used to hide it from everyone, and now I'm so open about it. And it feels weird, but it's part of me. And I'm just very proud of who I am. I'm proud of having it because without that, I wouldn't be me and my personality. Yeah. So, what age did you go to Ibiza? Ibiza went two thousand and four. Five and um, two thousand three, four, and five. Was it? Oh, four, yeah, two thousand three, four, and five. What age? Sixteen. 
So very young as well, fucking off. I fucked off, yeah. Stripper. Stripper. Naked. Very young age. Naked. Everything. Naked. And how was that experience? Um, at the time, I thought I was the G. <laughs> I thought, yes, I'm, I'm making so much money here. Like, no, other no, my friends. My friends are working. My friends are still living at home and being probably nurtured and getting their bills paid and all that. And I'm, like, living with... 22 year old people and stripping on a night time and got like hundreds and hundreds of pounds and I was money orientated like I was like there's and I was really quite clever in school and stuff but there was no way I was going down an educational route approach I wanted to make money I didn't want to be in that place I wanted to be as success, successful as I could be how was it then did they know your age 16 um they found out and I got sacked on the second year yeah, and they were fuming. It was in Gorm's garage. I should, we won't say them because they, might, they were already closed down, I think, then. but um, And the man, when he found out, was a bit disgusted, to be honest. When you're 16, you think you're a fucking woman. You think you're, I'm the woman. I'm, I'm, I can do this. Moment. And bear in mind, I wasn't just a normal 16-year-old who was getting her ass wiped. I was, I, I was paying my own bills. I was paying my own life. Like, anything I had was bought by me, like... Do you know what I mean? And you're partying heavy then at 16? Yes, very heavy. Um, wow, Ibiza was a bit of a blur. Like, probably, I was bad, badly, yeah, dead. I was just always partying, always off, all off my head. Did <laughs> really. you feel free there that you were away, that you were kind of escaping from the reality of your the, I, the, I got bullied here? a bit in Ibiza, actually, on the first year again. A group of girls did the same thing again. Um, and... My actual long-term best friend now, she's called Nina, she um, actually said, no, you're moving in with us. And she, she's Scottish, actually. And yeah, she, she's, the best, from, the best. she's from Falkirk, so yeah. I wouldn't say they were the best, drink, though. Yeah, no, she, was in, she, had, she used to drink books, food, book, book, book fast. fast, that's it. Book fast and make it into ice lollies. And mm. <laughs> but she just took me under her wing to this day. She still takes me under her wing, to be honest. Do you think then, you, why did you think you'd become a, a target for so many people? Um, were you outspoken? Were you aggressive yourself? Was mm, a bit of jealousy? What was it? Um, I think I was needing acceptance and reassurance all the time because I've worked out like part of my personality disorder is I don't, don't deal with situations the way normal people do. So if backed in a corner, I I don't handle rejection very well. So I'm more needy. And I think I used to go out with like absolute, I said used to, it's only been recently I've stopped. <laughs> absolute fucking loom balls like but so were you no yeah, yeah. I, I think but i think i think i'm get i got worse as the time went on because i think i'm actually attracted not attracted yeah to red flags in the past like mm -hmm. you get like pull some red flags out i'd be like oh my god he's for me like my, on for you. my mate used to bring me go oh my god this lad's got about 10 red flags he's definitely your type i'd be like yeah boop, definitely mm -hmm. i don't know what it was i used to try and like think i could help people like if someone sees someone as the worst person i'd go oh no i think he's lovely i think he's amazing Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why, but I, and, and then I'd be like completely controlled. And because I like being codependent, so I like to have someone constantly with me at all times. So, um, this is what I've been having therapy for actually, that I shouldn't feel like this. This is why I'm on my own at the moment. Um, because it's no good. Um, I like, I get like, if they go to the toilet, I'd be like, where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going to the toilet. I go, I stand by the toilet. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> why are you leaving me? They're like, you're fucking nuts, you. I'm like, why are you leaving me? Where are you going? What, what, what? I'm going to the toilet, Sally. I'm like, oh, don't be too long. So major abandonment issues? Yeah, major. Like, I probably had about a million red flags too. Like, <laughs> fucking. So together, we were just like, like oh. Mm -hmm. okay, so every relationship's basically been explosive? Um. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of any the ones that I don't remember probably weren't <laughs> the ones yeah. that didn't mean anything mm. probably weren't explosive but I think um, the major I've, I've only ever loved one person my ex um, who obviously that incident happened with he literally that was game over like no one else mattered when I met him it was like whoa like that was it how long were you in IV for? for? Um, I was in IV for, for three seasons um, so I came home in the winter why? Um. Well, I, my grandma died um, in what, the second season, I think it was, and I had a bit of a traumatic experience over there um, with, like, just... It was all getting a bit crazy over there. So a lot of people were on crack over there as well, like, to be honest, and it wasn't just, like, cocaine and ecstasy and stuff like that. The people who were there all the time who were living over there was getting right, really, really heavy. 
Um, it was like a different kind of group. I was going into IB for town, waiting for like different kind of drugs to come in. Um, and then coming and taking them on the villas and someone's stuff got robbed and uh, there was only a few people who knew. It was just getting dodgier and dodgier. And I remember ringing my mum going, thinking if I'm going to die, like I'll have to write the name of who it is underneath my bed. And I'm thinking, I'm 17 years old. I shouldn't be dealing with this shit. Um, so yeah. Were you suicidal in Ibiza? What um, was it like after I come down and shit? Still young, I don't really remember bad, it coming yeah. down because I think I was just off my head every you day. medication or anything over there? Um, no, I've been on enough. Med- medication's been a bit of my downfall. So um, they started me on Sertral, I think it's Propapanol or Sertral, I can't remember which one it was, at a very young age, like in, in, like in my adolescent teenagers. And I didn't take it. You have to take it every single day, otherwise it makes you more suicidal. And I remember taking like some days then I try and kill myself on like 20 30 tablets and then and then I think and my mum walked into one of my apartments once and I'd wrote in blood die Sally die on the wall like like it was normal just sitting there having a cup of tea my mum must have been like the fuck is this girl on I should just be off the Richter scale but that's perfect, right, Bifa, because everybody's fucking Everyone's off the chat off over the there, so you don't fit in. People might have thought you were, oh. you were normal. Do you know what? They, I, do you know what? I made some good friends there, and then I I just went, it was like, it was just a fucking crazy How did other people cool. treat you in I, Bifa? Um, So I went and met the Scottish girl, Nina. Everyone was sad. <laughs> no uh, one would mess with her. Everybody it. scared of her? <laughs> yeah, no one would mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> what so. did you do when you come back? Um, when I came back, I, I'm trying to think, I was working in Newcastle as a stripper, and then I, what did I do? Oh, I just decided to go, what did I do? Oh yeah, before that, oh yeah, so I'm just trying to think now. I was a stripper, and then I decided I didn't want to be with men anymore, so I started going out with a girl for like a year and a half, called Anna, um, and moved to Gran Canaria to be a singer. <laughs> 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 in the Casino Royale show. <laughs> Can you sing? Um, I, well, I don't think I should have got the star role. No, mm-hmm. but they give me it. Yeah. But yeah, um, I always landed on my feet. Like, it was weird. I was quite charming. As much as I was damaged, I was Manipulator. charming. But probably part of my disorder. I could yeah. probably... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So, you end up fucking lesbian. Lesbian. Then I got close. But um, then what else? I spoke to my mum. I didn't really speak to my mum. How was that relationship? Being with a girl compared, was it still volatile or was it more calmer? How was the volatile one? So weirdly, I turned into the, like, more like the um, perpetrator. I think I was a bit aggressive to her, actually. She was really, really lovely. She proper sorted me out. She looks after me all the time. She, she was older um, and she was nice. Nice, really nice girl. She won't speak to me now, like. So what happened when you come back from... Gran Canaria. Um, I then decided I wanted to have a baby. <laughs> As you do, or not? <laughs> no, I see all my stuff in my life. I've kind of planned what I wanted to do. So I went backpacking um, around Thailand, and then um, we met my child's father. And is that where you met Thailand? Yeah. So. Um, and how long was that relationship? Uh, five years. Was it? How was it the five years? There must have been love at the start, though. There yeah, must have been. Yeah, there was definitely love, and you know, obviously, I was married. I got married in my early twenties. Both to your child. Yeah, so I got I got I got married in my early twenties, which I wore the most vile sixty pound monsoon dress. It was <laughs> How done. many times you've been engaged? Um, a few times, but mainly. Uh, do you know what? I never got engaged to my ex husband. I got just married to him, and then yeah, like a few years later, we got engaged. A year later, we got engaged. After we got married, because he was military, and we had to obviously um, we had to um, get married to move in a house. So that was pretty simple. I was so isolated though in that relationship because I moved on to Plymouth. How the military wives did not like me like at all. I was this tattoo girl walking around. Like I was such a rock chick as well. Like I'd be at like Sonosphere Festival down. I had piercings everywhere. Like I was just like, fuck you all kind of vibe. Well, me, me, me kids was just in black, big black bow and all this. <laughs> so when did, the, when did the relationship come to an end? Um, 2012. Um, so it was four years actually relationship. 2009 to 2012 was that three? <laughs> Fuck sick, three. three. So many kids you got one, two, two. So who's the guy you you stabbed? 
Oh yeah, so that is my ex Jared. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to use his name. Am I? Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I met him in a brunch. Wish I'd never gone to that brunch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. And um, I just knew I was going to be with him. I remember going on my first day, and he took me to. We took me out for a posh meal, and I went. I just just sort of him. I went. Come on, let's go somewhere else. Do you want to go me local? So we went on the estate in the local pub, and I thought, yeah, I'm in there now. He's taking me around his family. <laughs> I thought he's not. He was just taking me in the pub down the road. But you know, I was like, yeah, yeah. Took one outside supposed to be me and I was like I'm gonna marry him she went you only went on a date with him I went nah I'm gonna marry him she was like I was just no I'm gonna marry him he's the one for me and then um I remember he he, we were in like we were in his we were were like wrecked and he wrote on me like SW loves GW and with Byro and I thought I'm not washing that off I'm gonna get that tattooed on me tomorrow so I left (laughs) (laughs) so I like didn't went in the shower didn't put my foot in I was like this and then um I am. Um, Did you get it tattooed? Yeah, I got it. Got straight to the tattoo shop. <laughs> oh, I was how so, old were you? So I was twenty-seven. Then. So you're quite older then. Yeah, I, and do you know what? I think for the first time, I'd felt um, home. Secure. And I felt. I just. I felt for the first time in my life in love and really in love. Like, like, like. Didn't matter what he kind of did. I was kind of like. I know. Yeah, and I think that's the reason that it's so painful um, because it feels like somebody who treated, um, treated or tried, I don't know, um, treated my um, my heart with such, such, just not, not, not kindness. And it was, it was, it was bad, yeah. Yeah, but again, it worked both ways as well. There'll be yeah. the time that like you're saying you love him, you want to get married straight away, yeah. get tattoos. So there was a part of you really loved that man. And obviously, yeah. things always go wrong or else oh. they don't end. So it can be difficult. But how was it then when that video went viral, when you're trying to stab him with the scissors and blood everywhere? It's, What's going through your mind then? So on the day, I remember I was sitting um, at home and, and I just felt... He was, he was speaking to other girls and he was moving on. And, and to be honest, I couldn't move on because as much as um, we were together or were together, he was always involved in my life. I felt like he was always watching, like he was always going, well, let me look at your phone and stuff like that. So I didn't really move on. And um, I found a message, he's messaged some girl and I remember just being distraught. Like absolutely, because the one thing I thought with him was like, he wouldn't cheat on me. Because he did love me. Like the lad, like didn't go out. He didn't even hang out with his mates for years. You know what I mean? We just didn't leave each other's side. Um, and then um, I just felt so suicidal. I remember ringing him. I was like, I'm going to kill myself. And I'd said it a few times before. And do you know what? I, I, I felt like I had a nervous break. This is the first time I'd say in my whole life I'd had a nervous breakdown. Like, it was like, my whole world was crashing before me. Um, like, even though I had two beautiful daughters as well, and, and I should have been more appreciative towards them. But I, it, to me, he was just like, I was losing the love of my life. And it was just, I, it was just disaster in D- my Difficult to take. So mm. the night then when you're doing that, was it both kids there in the living room? No, no, just no. Just the one? No, um, I rang him up and he'd come round to check if I was okay. And um, he came in the bathroom and I'd slipped my wrists and um, I just wasn't... To be honest, I was not with it. I took a lot of sleeping tablets. I was off my head. Um, I took antidepressants. I was... I was... If I, if, if I could pinpoint a time in my life where I really wanted to die, I probably would be that time. So that, this is why it breaks my heart so much about the way he acted with it. Because um, for me, when he came into the room and was laughing at me and got out his phone instead of hugging me, that made me more like lose it because I felt like humiliated. And and it was like I'm at my final steps of what of of. So you were at your wits end, oh. basically just trying to get attention. But again, if you're a nutcase, you've got yeah. to understand he's maybe whipped out his we, phone because you could have potentially said I, I he done it or this. I or, think, but I think if you listen to the audio of that tape, and I understand that totally in other cases and stuff like that. And you know, maybe in a slim fit that was it, but it wasn't because it was it wasn't done in a way of, of I'm scared. It was done in a laughing, I'm going to tell everyone you're not, you, you want to still be with me. And the thing that breaks my heart is when I couldn't be a mother, he should have been a father and the baby was behind me. And 
I was gone in the head. Like, if you look back on that video, if you, if you don't know if you've seen the video, um, I'm demented. I could, like, I'm demented. But I still managed to get the baby out of the room, and it shows me that I still had clarity to know what was right and what was wrong, whereas he just sat stood there and filmed. And I think the more work I've done on myself, I now completely, like, I really did the wrong thing. I... I I shouldn't have acted the way I did. Like, it's completely disgusting, especially when I'm a mother. Um, and I should have dealt with things differently. But I also believe that in in the place that I can't be a parent, I would hope that the other parent who is of sane mind could have. Yeah, but you know what? Fair play for admitting that, babe. So yeah. how's that, how does that affect you then when your daughter grows up and sees that video? How does that fuck with your mind? Oh, so it's only recently that I've started thinking about um, about what's going to be and because we obviously my older daughter's going to high school and I'm like shit it, it, at first it was like oh I'm doing only fans is that going to come up but then there's a lot of mums that do that these day and age and then I thought this video is so detrimental to my so him post this is another reason like because he blackmailed me with the video for a year he told me he had the video for a year and he'd, he'd, he'd continuously gone I'm going to if I went out on a nice out he'd go I'm going to post it I'm going to post it so he knew the outcome of what the video was because I, I'd rang him millions of times crying going I'm going to lose the kids I'm going to I'm going to have nothing. I'm going to have fucking nothing. You, the, the kids are going to go. They're going to they're gonna go. Like, you, how can you do that to your daughter? She's going to have no parents. They're not going to come to you. Like, honestly, I begged him. I begged him. And the, now I'm angry a little bit sometimes because I think, wow, our, our reactions have determined my child's whole adult life, school life, because it's going to be seen in schools. It's going to be a reflection of us as a family and it's going to be a hard a hard pill to swallow for my younger daughter, especially to watch herself in a film, in a, in a, in a clip and it breaks my heart. Like it, it literally, it makes me want to make sure that this video is used and this is another reason I did the book for a good example to stop, to show people the toxic relationships on both parts are really really bad for kids to see and they can be detrimental for years and years to come because i know it's going to cause i'm always going to be there but it, it might cause psychological problems for what they have to deal with yeah, did you feel as if you're walking on eggshells then it's like somebody's in a relationship with a girl they've made it done a, made a sex tape mm. obviously it's revenge porn but you had that hanging over your head that well, it was still in a bit of control of you yeah well he, the day he did it he, well, must, he must regret that releasing that show I don't like. know he's never said sorry yet um, I would hope he does I think he would regret it for what he's done to the baby I would hope um, but the day he did it um, I begged him not to put it up and he took my phone and he put it on my Instagram which is the worst thing um, because I had so many followers on it got re, um, re what's it called reposted like mm -hmm. 10 million times 5 million times I can't remember how many whatever the story says anyway it's, if it goes from my head but um it was the fact that the, the police were rang so many times. And when the police came to the house, like, I'm not an aggressive person, so I've never been in fights or anything like that. Now, I'm getting done for a Section 18. Like, uh, attempt murder, serious assault, what's that? It, it's under manslaughter. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, wounding with intent. So they come into my house and, obviously, I'm, like, they're looking for a weapon. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I went... They were, like, charging me. And I went, what am I getting charged with? They're, like, Section 18. I was, like what's a section 18 like i don't i don't i don't know um anyway they were like it's under manslaughter well um, I, th I thought oh my god i'm not gonna see i'm not gonna see the kids grow up i'm i'm going away like i thought oh my god so i went to the police station and they they were going to me this stupid solicitor who was who was you know just there for the what is it the duty one was going plead guilty plead guilty and i thought mm, I don't know about this pleading guilty because all I've been always taught to say no comment, no comment, whatever, say no comment. Never, ever, ever say you've got any sort of evidence. You went, nah, you banged to rights, there's a video there, you're gonna, you need to say no, you need to say you're guilty and then we can bring it down to a, um, to a, um, what, what, what's the one underneath, um, like, I don't know, battery or whatever it was. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. So I got in the room and I thought, nah, something inside of me said say no comment and I just kept going, no comment. 
no comment. I thank the gods I did because obviously it went. Um, as soon as you open your mouth, you're fucked. And plus, the video evidence is there. You might not know. Wow, even made time I could have. I, I could have. Yeah, I could have given. I could have made myself go away. Yeah. So I'm so grateful that. What <laughs> a shit lawyer. Who was his name? <laughs> don't, know, don't use him. No one. Fucking idiot. Don't be using the duty solicitor in um, in Mary. What's it? Mm -hmm. St Mary's. So he's what were you old. looking at then if you pleaded to it? Um, well, it, because of the domestic violence that had been in before, I reckon a jury or whatever, they would have put it down because there was a history of domestic abuse. Um, but, and I was tormented for this relationship. Um, so I think, not that I'd gone to the police, this was another reason that um, it looked bad on me, like within my court cases, because I've never re rang up and reported Jared to the police. I don't know if I his name, but um, so it was just hospital records and stuff like that. So... If I'd said, if I'd done what that stupid man said to do, I reckon I would have gone, I reckon I'd at least got three years. <sighs> and I would have been devastated because for me, like, losing your children is the worst um, thing you can ever, ever, ever go through. It's like you're mourning. What, what I can just describe it is it's like the, it's not like the dead, it's like mourning or something. It's like, it's like I've got no purpose in life. So like I'll get up every day and like, I get so many trolls now saying you're a shit mum, you're this, you're shit. Like, honest to God, like that, that site that I don't want to even mention, like the amount of stuff they say about me as a mother, they don't know the half of it. I, I fight a battle every single day. And I, I want nothing more in my life. I would never even go out with someone now. I am only concentrating on my children and my family being back together. And that is it. That just is try all. to rebuild. Listen, you're here to just, yeah. to people get a better understanding of your past as well. You've had a fucked up past. You've been through a lot of shit. But... You've still got to take full responsibility of your actions yeah. as well you, you, and what you, you did that to. night. You have to. And do you know what? It's not just responsibility for what I've done as a person. For me, it's it's the impact that I've got on my family. Like my mum, my my mum's had to leave her job. You know what I mean now? And my kids, my kids are going to have to go through school. And um, and do you know what? It, it, you know, this, this day and age in school, it's just hard. It's hard. It's, it's fucking hard. And I feel like I have not... Um, give them the best start because of that and it's it breaks me out how was it then when you when did you when did you find out you were losing your kids um straight away well you knew you know was didn't that you? yeah you know it's gonna happen and i wanted to do this is another reason i wanted to do this because i i would hope that maybe they would watch this in the future and because because i do believe that there's an explanation needs to happen and i believe that the, and i hope other people see this that people make mistakes we aren't just we aren't perfect and do you know what i call me whatever you just want to call me but i literally made mistakes and i am trying to work to make them better and rectify them and i was i was literally broken to anything you can even imagine and i still now get up every day try and build to make the, my life better for them and try and be stable and i think that's the main thing within mental illness to try and keep um, keep stable mind, keep into your fitness, keep into your d healthy foods. Try and keep organised because messiness can create more messy minds. So what are you doing? What's your daily routine like now? So I'm doing a five a.m. club, which um, is absolutely amazing. Um, it's just organised you because what what the what the the kind of the, the thought into it is is that you are using your mind more while people are asleep so there's no distraction so for the first four hours of the day till everyone really wakes up or the majority of people you've already done all your stuff that you need to do so I my my life is a lot about organization so a lot of lists a lot of keeping focus because if I get in any way distracted men distract me so I stay away from them definitely <laughs> <laughs> um and a lot of I like keeping fit it's so important and ha I don't eat meat so I haven't eaten meat for five years now um, the benefits from it yeah and my my younger daughter doesn't eat meat at all and never has and she's so healthy and like she's a lot healthier than what my older daughter was so, so what was the steps then for losing your kids that video going viral what's the steps then to building your family together again um, I'm just I'm on the right road everything's I uh, can't go into much a lot of detail because I don't want to jeopardise anything so but I'm on the right steps I'm working well I've done everything I've done a lot of therapy cognitive therapy um, I've done domestic violence um, counselling I'm now doing a guest appearance on the DV course for the UK and um, talking about my book um, because it is, it is a traumatic experience, and it is, 
It is. I mm, the book is about gaslighting. It's about um, it's about narcissistic behavior traits. It's about red flags. It's about and I'm the queen of, fi- of finding them red flags. Listen, <laughs> I could find them under a rock. Like honestly, yeah. like I can find them in a bar. Like I literally, I could stand by someone, and the most majority of the people who would talk to me would be fully red flagged. Yeah, I just attract them. How but, did the idea of the book come about? Were you scared of doing it? Um, no, I wanted to do the book because um, I was getting so. When I got um, arrested, it was in all the papers, and then every front cover, and this is what really irritates me about the press, without any conviction, um, they posted um, a Sally Axel stabs kid, stabs him, okay, a Sally Axel stabs boyfriend in front of in front of toddler on every single newspaper without any conviction. It wasn't really saying what I don't know. I mean, a stabbing would be, would he be wounded? Like, do you know what I mean? It would be... They, they, um, so they kept wanting a story out of me and ringing me up, do you want to do this story? And I thought, you know what, I'm only going to get about, what, a thousand words. Why not write a book? So I sat at home for the three weeks because I was fucking trying not to be out in public because I was getting so much death threats. Um, and they, um, I just wrote a book. I wrote it and my management at the time, like, released it onto, um, what is it? Amazon? Amazon. Yeah. And I got, I got number two bestseller. I got number one new release. Mm-hmm. So, which was really shocked because I didn't, I didn't like expect that at all. But it was brilliant because I got my story out, and also like I've, had, you don't understand how many girls I have every day messaging me, um, just with like the same situations. There's so many people and males going through very similar situations where you do feel on eggshells in the relationship, and it is toxic. And that is the only word you can use for it: toxic. On either part, it's toxic. Yeah, and, and both parts, like I say, you've yeah. been part of the problem and so is obviously her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. So it's not just a case of pointing fingers and blaming everybody no, else because... And, you, and you've got to, you've got to let go of it all. You've got to, um, you've got, you've got to, you've got to forgive and forgiveness, forgiveness and say sorry. What's your relationship like with your ex now? Um, non-existent. He's met someone else I hear and it's non-existent. I wish him all the best. I hope... I hope he finds peace and I hope he can have a healthy relationship in the future because that's the main thing because we have got a child together. Yeah, fair play. That's the only reason you can move on. Yeah. So going through all that then, we're getting the trolls. How yeah. did that affect you? How long did that last? Is it still going on the today? Trolls. Oh. Does that push you to the brink of suicide again or does it make you stronger um, now? Oh, I have tried... I, if... Every day's a battle with this. Um, there's a site, and obviously, I think most people know about this site, and it's absolutely vile and disgusting. And um, it's every single day. I mean, these people are to the point that they're taking photos of me when I'm out in, in a supermarket, and they're posting, "Look what she's doing." I'm getting stalked by these people. Like, I'm not even like lying. It, it, I'm getting absolutely stalked by these people. Like, if I'm not online for two hours, where's Sally gone? Why is she not online? Um, the stuff they say about my me as a mother, um, sexually disgusting and stuff. Um, they, they the other day someone came on and said she's gonna she's gonna um, she's gonna string herself up soon and do us do do herself out this do, do herself out the misery. Like these are the type of things like and especially because I've got mental illness and I haven't got my family around me. Um, it's it's just disgusting, like absolutely disgusting. I mean, I broke down a lot. Like I did a live the other day, and I really broke down in it. And I, I'm sick of crying over it. To be honest, um, I am past letting these people affect me because I do believe that these people aren't very nice people in in their hearts. So not me. They might they might be good people in uh, at one point in their lives, but they've got a lot of hate in themselves because to go and sit on a site and be anonymous and just write loads of hate about people. And I have caught a few of them, you know. And I spoke to one the other day. Um, she did something wrong. She left her when she'd screenshot one of the Instagram things. She left a profile picture on the side. So I found I and mean, I got I started looking through all my Instagram, found that same profile picture, and I messaged her. And I said, "Why are you doing this to me?" Because I just thought I need to know what have I done wrong to use to make you have. I'm talking. There's like five thousand five thousand thread um, comments on threads, like lots. And she said to me, um, she was from Australia, so I don't even know how I bothered her that much. She said, my husband uh, died and he got um, he got shredded in machinery and this was my only place I felt like I had friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, do you know what? I just, I was going to argue with her and I just, me as a person, because I'm quite an empath, I just wrote back to her and I put, you know what? You need to concentrate on that beautiful son of yours you've got there because I would do anything to have my kids with me. So just concentrate on him. 
concentrate um, and, and put all your love into him and don't put your energy into sites like that. And I wished her all the best. And she went back on the site and put, I don't want to get involved in any of this anymore. I've spoke to Sally. She seems really nice and she's changed my mind about her. And I thought... Well, but silence is golden. You need to stop looking at that site. Because oh, I don't look at it anymore. Out, out, sight, out of mind and... Fuck everybody Are you else, on it? man. <laughs> what is my turn up then? That bastard, that fucking crack, but just out of sight, out of mind. Get off it, man. It's difficult, but silence is key. I think the thing I, the thing that I really do want to be silent about it, and I know I'm drawing attention, but I feel like I am doing I think like so many influencers and so many people who've been on reality TV show and so many people who are in the media who are on them sites because you're only allowed to be on them sites if you've got over 10,000 followers which I shouldn't be even allowed to be on there now because they've hacked my account and they laughed about it so I don't even know how I'm still on there but um the, the, everyone's scared to mention this site yeah because no one wants them no one to look at their own friends so everyone's tiptoeing about it like like this and I think do you know what I I feel like I can do help people. I don't know why. And my friends, one of my friends, she's been to therapy because of the site. She had to come off social media. And she, she messaged me going, I'm really worried about you. You need to stop looking at the site. And I thought, I will stop looking at the site and I have stopped looking at the site. But I still want people to... I feel like I can change people's minds about going on it. I don't know why. I think it's just so... You're fighting a, a, nah, you're fighting a lost cause, man, because... Those people will be mentally disturbed. That's what I'm saying. So you know I, I mean? wanted so to fuck them, man. So I'm gonna do. I'm doing a podcast a minute with with girls, and I'm yeah. gonna. I'm doing it with all these only fans girls on tomorrow, and then I want to do it with um with with a mental health worker, like a woman mental health worker, and I want to analyze this. Is this a mental condition? being a troll because I think in um, like of course teen, it is it's got to yeah, be but course. it's going to be a name mental, you know like I've got mm-hmm. histrionic and borderline personality disorder there's going to be like troll disorder or, or something there's got to be a disorder because yeah. it's unhealthy but they have no life they have no fun in their life they have no positivity their lives are already in hell so you've got to feel sorry for them yeah. you've just got to send them love until That's they love themselves which is difficult because we've all got ego we've all got a bit of like I will always come out swinging if somebody steps up to the plate. I will exactly. always step forward, but I don't ever search for it. Yeah. If it comes my way, listen, he, he, I'm here. But I, the thing that annoys me is like these people like literally would not say this to my face because I have been, I, I'm full. But I'm you know full. this, but yet you're still searching but for no, it. But no, so that's why I don't read it anymore because it literally is, it, it's impossible. But when I see stuff like, um, you know, like when, when you see like the Caroline Flack thing and the thing that reson- resides with me with Caroline Flack is because, and I don't mean to bring her up on this because only because it's a year anniversary, that she was tormented by a domestic violent relationship, that she was in the media as being a perpetrator, the same as me, and without a conviction. And the amount of trolls that in the media that, that can just direct people but into Even trolling. if you got a div- conviction or not, because the video was there. So yeah. you were fucked no matter what. I was fucked. Do you know what I mean? So you had to just put your hands up to it and say, do you know what, I've done wrong, but, I fucked it. What's the script now with... Um, your kids, have you custody yet? Are you still working on it? Yeah, just a work in progress. I have a family, I'll be back together very soon, but um, I can't really go into it. But you seem in a good place. Do you know what? Like, I, I think even better than like the last month or the month before, I feel like I'm glowing again because I know what my direction, because I think, I think I've always been like, oh my God, what am I going to do? What, what's going to happen? And I think I know where I'm going now. And um. I think for the first time in my life, I feel like I am happy with who I am being on my own. I think I've always needed a relationship and like I'm paying my own bills and paying my own card, paying my own life. Like I don't need anyone and it feels fucking amazing. Like, do you know what I mean? I yeah. just feel great. But just stay in that path then. Yeah, stay true to you. Exactly. And I just feel like, you know, just need to keep focused and to keep try to not get off the party and to no good. I think this lockdown has probably helped me a lot because mm-hmm. um, because it's lockdown and everyone, I know it's really bad for all business and stuff, but it stopped me with temptation of going out because if I haven't got the kids there, I'm like, oh, I may as well go out. But And I've moved totally out the area, totally away. So I've totally segregated myself and concentrated on country walks. I know it sounds like probably... People like Sally, yeah, really. But I've really, really gone back to basics within myself. I've done a lot of therapy. I, I think therapy is the main thing to do if you suffer with domestic violence, mental illness, anything 
talking about it is like the most important thing. How much therapy you done? Um, oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> See, I was supposed to stop my my therapy with my woman um, what, a month ago, and I just said, please, can you just carry on? She's like, but you're finished. I went, no, 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 no. She, and she, I just have her on call now. I ring her up. And to be honest, I put people on her when, you know, when girls message me about their relationships, I like, mm-hmm. I'll go ring her up, go, what can I do about this girl? Like, because she's so, and my one, Victoria, she's so amazing. And for the first time, I came, I hated therapy because when I was I was asked to do like I had a psychological analysis like a few years ago and it was horrible it was like this man who sat there and he, and I have problem with me, with male authoritative figures I like if I can't manipulate them or make them like do say what I want and they're really firm it makes me feel uncomfortable and I want to like rebel against them so I think this was the first time I'd found a therapist that I really opened up to and I felt like I was just chatting to my friend and then but she was helping me and she helped me deal with a lot of the situation with Jared and and getting over it because to be honest I, I, I still obviously loved him till like well about like a year ago like it was not it wasn't just an instant I don't love him anymore because you you kind of it's like the Stockholm, um, Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. syndrome you love the person who's probably the worst person for you you end up like needing that love that and was addicted to that toxic love which yeah. is crazy. It's fucked up that how the energies attract, so it just shows you that you're both battling whatever trauma you have, whatever yeah. demons or trauma you have been battling back in the day, but as long as you can keep your side of the street yeah. clean, keep your side of the street clean now, yeah. because no matter how fucked up you are in life, no matter your mistakes, you've got to let go, and if other people are coming forward, if you're writing books, if you're now helping other people through yeah. abusive relationships yeah. or other stuff like that, then you've just got to kick on. You've got to try and concentrate on the positives. Yeah. Keep working on you. And we all make mistakes. Listen, I speak to fucking murderers and bank robbers and, yeah. and people forgive them. Like, it's not the end of the world. Yes, what you've done was wrong, but it's clear that you're fucked up in the head back then. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? You're maybe drinking, taking drugs, all the shit that you've been through when you're younger, abandonment issues, yeah. been in the loony bin. It's a lot for a young girl trying to kill yourself, looking for love through the wrong way. So yeah. that is difficult, but... There's nothing you can do but just fucking move on. Try and concentrate on the day and health, move on for the future. Health and, health and health as well. Like, I really believe, like, health, really watch what you're putting into your body and, you know, food-wise. So it's, that's the energy that you're going to be using throughout the day. And really, really trying to be as positive you can. Like, say if you, like, you drive, I, like, I used to get, like, dead angry to drive, arguing with everyone all the time, snappy, snappy, snappy. And I would just get the worst day, then a worse day, then a worse day. I'd really try and, like, now not let things affect me or little things bother me. Pick your pick your fights wisely. Don't pick. Don't try and fight with everyone. Many tattoos you got? Um, a lot. I've got loads. Of just. And what's the script with in the papers when you got the heel implant kind of thing? Oh, the, that wasn't real. But um, we were doing because um, we I was working with a girl and we were doing a documentary on. Um, false news and the way the media believe anything and to be honest there was no um, surgery that I was saying I had and they still were writing about it but then obviously the stabbing incident came after so we never got we never released it but you know I, it started off when I went to LA because I went to Botched I went and filmed Botched with LA mm-hmm. in LA and they, they were like oh you want your heel implants so it kind of people just, get heel implants? I think there's something in China or something I don't know I'm not really into it so that wasn't real then you got heel implants? no I'm going to get surgery in, um, in a couple of weeks anyway as well I'm getting my bum done again but to get what your ass done? again yeah I'm going to get it bigger <laughs> so going forward for the future then the future. Tell me what's your plans. So my plan is to now um, do my podcast um, with the girls. Wait, when's this out? Where can so, people watch it? So we're filming tomorrow. Um, they are going to be. It's going to be out at the end of the month. So that's going to be really cool. It's just going to be. I really just wanted to have a girls podcast with only girls on, and be like girl talk, like about the dirty secrets to like the worst dates to like. Have the weirdest messages girls have had on OnlyFans, how to make the most money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some about um, marketing, about how, how women can make money and how can they hustle. Hustling. Oh, I've got to be, man. That's what life's all about. Some... So all the perverts will burn that. So is that going to... <laughs> well, we've got three girls. will burn that anyway, wouldn't yeah. you, bro? Do you want to film this one? <laughs> <laughs> is it... Um... Is it on YouTube? Yeah, so I'm going to put it on YouTube. Right, what's the link? Send me the links, I'll put I'll it in the description. I'll send you all the links, yes. Yeah, so, so this is Girls from OnlyFans, strippers. So this is the first episode, the first two episodes are going to be Girls, see, Dirty Little Secrets from OnlyFans. So mm. we're going to find out about um, some, of the, some of the weird... Some of the leaders. perverts that are going to get exposed. I'm not going to say that. Just don't the be exposing The amazing customers that pay me a lot of money, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Out them all, fuck them. <laughs> How is... 
the OnlyFans then? How you, how are you feeling with that? Well, I, I initially started it because um, I was in a situation because obviously Jared left me with no money <laughs> and I thought, fuck, what the fuck am I going to do? And um, obviously I had, to, I had kids to pay for, so I started it then and then I kind of had a love-hate relationship with it. I made loads of money in the summer because I was like, I love it. And then I just went off the radar for September and October and then, but now I'm getting back in the swing of things because do you know what? I've realised it is what it is. I am sick to death of um, of thinking that women can't be sexualized because it really isn't the case. Like we shouldn't be scared to be be sexual and be think. Oh, what will they think? So what? If you want to go sleep with whoever you want to go sleep with, sleep with them. It doesn't matter. We can do whatever one is. Women. I just think there's a bad prejudice on um, OnlyFans, and that's kind of why I wanted to do my little thing, sit down on the couch, because I just believe that women are sexual beings. So just go out and. Get your tits out everybody, <laughs> But everybody, as you've just got to be careful, as long as you're happy, as long as you're not hurting anyone, exactly. then be who the fuck you want to be. Like, I know plenty of girls that do OnlyFans, I know the porn do stars, you know I know the making all. those? Like, some of my friends are making, I mean, like, they're making 50Ks a month. But as long as they're happy, because yeah. the money is, becomes but a fulfillment. I think that's the good thing with OnlyFans, that it's not, <clears throat> you're not ex- getting exploited by other people, because... <clears throat> <coughs> so what's yours like? Is it? <clears throat> what is it? No, no, mine's not like. Oh, I don't want to say that because no, I will not say this because then we'll not get people subscribe. <laughs> no, that's, 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 mine's amazing. It's so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so the people subscribe for the month and then. So they subscribe, subscribe for the month. So some girls, you, you just. This is what I think about OnlyFans. This is why I enjoy this site, and because it is your own, you're your own boss. You're not being exploited in any way because if you want to post one day, you can post. If you don't, you don't. It's not like you're working for an agency and they're like, you've got to get naked now. Get, go, on, go on the bed and do this. It's literally women who are being girl bosses and making loads of money. And why the hell not? I mean, it's people go, oh, do you want to get married and have kids? Well, if my fella doesn't doesn't like me in nice lingerie and being good in bed, then well, yeah. <laughs> I've interviewed a, a dominatrix and shit as well, and the shit they got up to is they've got guys fucking filled nappies with custard and kicking them in the balls. And oh, I don't. Well, mine isn't like this. I yeah. mostly my, my my followers are mostly scouts, by the way. I like <laughs> I was gonna do this, I was gonna do this thing where you can change so you can't know no, mm. no people from your area on there. My mate was like, you've got to do it. You don't want people in your own area seeing it. And I went. I'd lose like ninety percent of my customers if I took scouts as well. But swear. guys, guys love crazy as well. Guys love nut jobs. Well, I think when I, when that video came out, I was literally sitting there like, and no one knew I was single before that. And then next minute, my Instagram blew off with half a Walton prison fucking messaging me through. I was like, oh my <laughs> god! I swear to God, I've never had so many people follow me and message me with like with with bull, bulldogs or whatever. But it's just yeah. their profile pictures, yeah. fucking staffies. I was like, um, but yeah, it blew it blew off. He like put he put me on the radar for like fucking. Anyone who likes psycho bitches in the world, I was like, no, this isn't what I like yeah. anymore. So would you have another book for the future? Yeah, so I'm going to be doing another book on the... Um, on, on, oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be doing another book on women empowerment. And it's going to be like a journal book, so you can kind of interact with it as well. So it's like a really... Like a place that people can like... Make, start the foundations of, of their journey so it's not just about my journey it's about helping people with their journeys as well what about looking back at your life so far what do you think I think it's a fucking mess <laughs> no I'm joking so with that I'm honest uh, it's a fucking car crash uh, um, but listen at least you're here still smiling just that's all you can do is smile try and rebuild try and, the first objective would be get the family back get well, that stronger is the ma- that's the only yeah. objective at the moment I mean I am the most happiest when I'm a mum and as much as people can say what they want to say, I was born to be a mother and I cannot wait for the for me to just move to the next step. So I think I deserve it now. I've 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 paid the price and so, so see when you kids. got the psychologist and stuff, does that help you then getting your kids full well, custody again when you do the psychology stuff? Yeah, I mean anything. Is that all reports? Yeah, I've just done a social media course for kids on social media. I'm doing a um, kids mental health course at the moment. I am doing every goddamn thing you could think of to get my family back together. There isn't a thing, there isn't a stone unturned. I literally, I'm the, probably the most annoying person in the world because I'm like ringing everybody, what's going on? What's happening? Because I just, I'm ready now. I'm ready. I, I, I don't think I was ready as when, when that, um, I, think they, I think everyone does the right thing at the time. And I believe I was in a, such a mental state. I, I remember thinking, oh my God, I, do, I want to, I, do I want to take put these kids in a car and just drive us off a cliff? Because I didn't want them to take them that much. And I remember thinking, 
what the fuck am I thinking this for? Like, how can you even think this? I'm thinking I'm fucking lost, losing the plot here. And now I know I wasn't ready. I wasn't mentally stable enough to be a mum back then. Yeah. Do you think that incident that night then potentially saved your kids' lives? I don't think it saved the kids' lives. I think it saved... I think the kids would be... would It was... Were, I don't think it saved the kids' lives in that much respect. I think it saved a big disaster no, happening. for you to understand that you were struggling, that you were I, having I, a nervous I think, breakdown? I think I would have ended up dead. I think I 100% was in love with Jared so much. I think I would have ended up dead. I think I would have just ended up at top of myself. Honestly, I just wasn't all there. I think it took me this to regain. And now they come back, I'm like, ooh, I don't, it, I don't have them feelings anymore because I see now how disastrous it was. But I think we were both just so in love with each other in a toxic way. It was just crazy. I did hear by one of my mutual friends that he said that it was the best thing that happened, that video coming out. And I personally think it was the best thing that came out because I just think without that, we wouldn't have split up because it, as much as we were split up, we would always gone back to forward, step with each other, not slept with each other, step with each other. And I think it would have gone on for like, until I was 40, 50 and proper washed up. Like I would never have been able to meet another person. I've just mm -hmm. been at the end. So I think in a way it's given me a new lease of life and it's made me like really work on who I am and, and, ha and, and be a better person. I mean, my daughter said to me the other day, she was like, I, I went, oh, um, I would like to get married. I, I went to, I went, I want to get married. My older daughter says, I mean, I want to get, I want to get married. I thought I was going to get married next year. She went, don't bother mum. I went, what do you mean? She went, I just like you as an independent woman. And I thought, they're seeing me as an independent woman. And that makes me happy. Like, I'm no longer, like, money dependent on a man. I'm no longer emotionally dependent on a man. I'm no longer lo lost. I'm really, I think even from being young, the first time I've really found myself. How do you think the day you get custody of your kids again, how do you, make, how do you think that'll make you feel? Oh, it'd be amazing. Um, I, I couldn't even describe it. It, it literally, it's all. It's, it's not like it's gonna happen like one day. It's just like a work in progress now. So, um, I just want the best for them. And if I'm not, if I wasn't the best for them, then I'm, I agree with that. But I believe I am the best for them, and I believe every child needs their mother. And I am literally adore my children. And I never really talk about this, so it's quite weird me having a conversation with because. In the media, I've tried to really wipe it out, like not speak about it because I just, out of respect for them. But the reason I'm wanting to talk about them today is because I've told you, like there's a background story rather than just mentioning them. I don't put them on social media or anything. And I just think that the best place for them was with me and that's, that's it. And I've done everything I can now. I'm working so hard. And I think that's my only main objective now. It's the only thing. Like in the future, I want to be... I'd like to do um, more speaking public about for women. I'd like to do my podcast. I'd like to be, I'd like to do another book. Obviously, I'm doing another book, and I'd like to be a good, I'd like to be a good role model for my kids. And I don't think I have always been that. And I think in the future, I really want to change not everyone's perception of me because people will either like me or they'll hate me. But I want to change. I want to make sure my kids are proud. That's the only. That's the only thing that really yeah. matters, isn't it? So for yeah. anybody that's watching just now, it's maybe suicidal. You've obviously been there, you've tried to top yourself a few times. Yeah. You've come out the other end. You're doing yeah. well again. What advice would you give for them? Know that you're not alone. Talk to somebody, and if you've got no one to talk to, really just remember wh why you're important in this world. Remember who you are. Remember what you bring bring to this world, because everyone has a special has a special quality of why they're here. So remember why you're special. Sal, for coming on today, babe, and Thank telling you. your story. Thanks, Thank babe. you. I know it must have been difficult, but Thank you you're so here. Much. I wish you all the best for Thank the future. You. Thank Stay you. Stay blessed, so much. babe. Bye. Check out more of my podcasts on the right, and be sure to like, share, and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.